All right, this is Patrick Rogers, and today we have the privilege to have Pete Alexander on the show, and Pete is the CEO of OfficePlants.com. Welcome to the show, Pete. Patrick, thank you for, uh, for having me on the show, and I really appreciate your uh, listeners' time as well. Absolutely, man. So, so a little bit about Pete. Professor Pete Alexander is the president of the greatest interior landscaping company in the San Francisco Bay Area, <laughs> Office Plants by Everything Grows. Uh, it, and and I can definitely attest to that. He actually lives up in the Seattle area and is the uh, president uh, uh, from a distance. So anybody that can pull that off, first of all, uh, has the business going very well. So uh, in addition, he serves as an adjunct college professor where he helps inspire students to develop and apply key concepts of marketing specifically to their area of interest. He's also a professional speaker and best-selling author on reducing stress in your everyday life. And lastly, but certainly not least, he's a certified laughter yoga leader and improv comedy cast member supporting his community to laugh more and stress less. I, I love all that, man. I can't wait to dive into more of, of just everything there. What, what's one interesting fact, Peter, uh, that, that not many people know about you? Uh, well, it's quite interesting, and this might be for some of the listeners who um, might actually have heard of vaudeville, but uh, my dad was a, uh, a child vaudeville entertainer, and uh, so I got to learn probably over 150 jokes from oh, him, wow. And it's not like I can read them off like one yeah. after another, right. but anytime I'm having a conversation with someone, uh -huh. I, whenever a keyword or phrase sure. comes up, I, all of a sudden I'm <laughs> thinking in the back of my head, I know that I know a joke about that. Yeah. So that's, yeah. uh, that's kind of a fun, uh, fun little tidbit that a lot of people don't know about me. You're a great guy to have it at pretty much any part of your situation, man. You're going to always something you got an arrow in your quiver ready to go, man, for with a good joke. That's exactly it. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that uh, um, when I do like my laughter yoga classes, um, you know, if there, there's jokes that are coming up in my mind all the time. Yeah. But it may or may not be appropriate, appropriate for the group. For the <laughs> <laughs> because believe it or not, some of those jokes that I learned were not necessarily the ones that you can t uh, to tell to children. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, I, I love that, though, because, you know, what is life? You know, we're only here for this, in, you know, this small amount of time compared to infinitesimal, right? And, and you know, and you're out there given to the community, making life fun. I imagine working for you is probably equally, <laughs> especially once I get to know you, you're cracking the jokes out. I'm sure you don't hold back at work either. Typically not. Yeah, I, I like to, in fact, our, our operations manager has a, a whole host of jokes. And so we like to to share those anytime we get together. So it, it's exactly banter. that. Yeah, nice. exactly. So it's, it's fun. And uh, yeah, you know, I try and keep it light. Um, because you're right, you know, when when people take things too seriously, you know, it's like, that's, that's not what, uh, what makes life worth living for. Yeah. So, so tell me more about this, this, uh, yoga laughter thing. I, I've mm -hmm. never heard of that. Well, it came about, uh, it actually started in 1995 in India. Uh, Dr. Kataria had uh, invented it. And basically the premise of laughter yoga is that as smart as our bodies are, they don't know the difference between a real and a forced laugh. Yeah, it only knows true. that you're laughing. And yeah. so when you do a hearty laugh for uh -huh. anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds, you automatically get the positive endorphins in your body that give you the health benefits and that feel good really? that you have. If you think about that hearty laugh and when you laugh with someone and you just laugh, 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 and then you think about how you're just saying, God, I feel great. Um, and that's what the intent of doing a laughter yoga activity is. You want to get people laughing together and laughter mm. is contagious. Contagious. It's totally contagious. Absolutely. It is. And whenever we have somebody new that comes into the class, uh -huh. of course, they're going to feel weird because yeah. it's not natural for us yeah. to laugh just to laugh. Yeah. We have to see, oh, okay, we must hear a funny joke. We have right. to see a funny video. Mm -hmm. We have to, you know, whatever it happens to be. But in the activities we do, mm -hmm. we just let ourselves be like kids and mm. laugh at things that are completely ridiculous. Right. But because the people around you are laughing, that contagiousness happens. And before you realize it, you're laughing and 
after an hour, it's <laughs> literally, and this is clinically it's proven. It's a workout because, and that's, I'm glad that you said that because clinical research, and there are so many clinical studies on this, but yeah. one from Stanford uh, fairly recently found that 20 minutes of laughter yoga is like spending 60 minutes doing hard cardio in the gym. Come so, on. I'm not kidding you. Stop. I'm not kidding. It's, it is clinically proven. So I always joke with the, the people, we do an hour class um, once a week. And uh, I always kid, kid to them. They said, you know, now, now you can, after class, you can brag that you were in the uh, gym for three hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a full hour, but three hours of being in the gym. Nice job. That's amazing. That is so cool. It is. It is. And um, it's it, what's funny is, is for me, uh, I only like to do the laughter yoga in person because, you know, during COVID and stuff, they were doing it all through Zoom, et cetera. And I, you know, it works, but it's just so much better for me when I'm in person with people because you that contagiousness really does work. Yeah. You know, because it's it's just so it, it, it's it's an amazing thing that you should just experience. And and uh, um, there's there's many laughter clubs uh, throughout the country, throughout the world. Oh, so and cool. so uh, it's, so it's definitely worth checking out. Well, and and when you think about it, too, it's not just yes, you're getting some cardio, some some health benefits that way. But mm -hmm. when, when it comes to longevity, when it comes to fighting cancer, right? I mean, yes. they've proven that cancer is directly related. The biggest cause of cancer is stress, right? You yes. see that or sugar? I don't know, one of the two. So it actually, so, so, uh, and, and I got diabetes for, uh, from, that's my chronic disease from stress. But it, it actually, what happens is, yes, uh, that stress that goes unchecked as we continue to pour stress into our bodies, we get you know, the adrenaline, adrenaline, yeah. the cortisol yeah. that gets yeah. dumped into our bodies constantly right. versus, you know, our, our bodies are the same bodies that we had back in the stone age. And the way our bodies were designed was right. to have that fight or fight flight. Or flight. Yeah. Yep. So outrun that, that T-Rex, yeah. that saber tooth yeah. tiger. But nowadays, especially as business owners, et cetera, we stress about everything. We do. And it just, we're constantly putting that the, that adrenaline, that cortisol into our bodies. And what will happen is our bodies will give us early warning signals. And mm. if we continue to <clears throat> ignore those early yeah. warning signals, it has no choice but to keep raising the bar until something ends up breaking. And in my case, it was my, uh, my pancreas. And the interesting Holy thing God. is um, the uh, there's, I have a distant cousin who had diabetes. That's the only mm. one in my family that had diabetes. Yeah. No, no other diabetes in my There's family, nothing, in there. Yeah. nothing there. So it really is about our lifestyle and how we deal with stress. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting because if you talk to doctors, they'll say, well, technically mm -hmm. stress doesn't cause chronic diseases. Mm. Yeah, yeah, technically that's technically, the case. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's clarify for everybody. Okay. Yeah. So, you do whatever uh, the stressful activity is constantly to yourself. Yep. What that does is it causes cellular inflammation in the body. Or even the emotional, reliving the emotional trauma that occurred Absolutely. from something can, can reoccur time over it, time. And you're just, it's just as much stress as the original uh, occurrence. You're correct. And so what that does is it triggers the cellular inflammation in our bodies. And as that cellular infl inflammation in our bodies continues to propagate, yeah. that's what causes the chronic diseases, whether it's yeah. cancer, diabetes, heart Everything. disease, et cetera. And that's where the problem is because we don't deal with it properly. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Man, we, we could spend a whole nother half an hour just talking. Well, geez, we could spend a couple hours talking about stress relief. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> which, which is really important, you know, as, as CEOs. I mean, we're, we're taking on, depending on the company, but we're taking on a tremendous amount of stress. And, uh -huh. and, and until you get things ironed out and going well, no matter what, you're always going to have that stress. So it's still, still a very important topic. It is. It is. And like I said, you want to, to you know, listen to your body because for me, you know, I had this perfect storm of stressful activities back in 2008 that mm. caused me to get 
my uh, stress-induced diabetes. But mm -hmm. several years previously, I had all the warning signals, things mm -hmm. like I was, you know, I couldn't sleep very well. Um, I was, uh, you know, my back and my my shoulders were all stiff and and uh, and in pain. My and and so those things were all giving, telling me I was getting headaches regularly. And it's like, okay, that's not what normal, normal feels no. like, but yeah. I started accepting it as normal. Mm. And so, and the thing is, is that when we're so busy and we're mm. so focused on taking care of our business and our other responsibilities, it, I know how easy it is. Cause I did it to say, oh, okay, I'll deal with this when I get a chance. Yeah. Well, and then all of a sudden uh, it, about 30 days before I got diagnosed with stress-induced diabetes. I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. And wow. I was in my mid-40s mm. and I wasn't dieting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mm. wasn't doing anything different right, in my exercise. Right. And it just kept on coming off. And at Dang, first I thought, scary, oh, it is. And at first I thought, this is fantastic. I hadn't lost weight <laughs> since I was in my early 20s. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then after that 30th pound came off, mm -hmm. I thought, eh, I better get this uh -oh. checked out. And Dang, right. sure enough, doctor said, oh, congratulations. You have stress-induced diabetes. And so now I have this chronic disease that I got to deal with for the rest of my life. Gotcha. Wow. And, and is that something had you dealt with stress in a different way, you think maybe it wouldn't even have come on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, I would have been able to avoid it. Um, and, uh, you know, now, you know, it's, it's so frustrating because, uh, you know, we, we take our, um, like our health insurance for granted often when we're an employee of a company, yeah. but then when we, as entrepreneurs, we need to have our own health insurance, whatever that is. And you, you see, wait a minute, it is very costly mm. when, especially if you've got a decent income, it is mm -hmm. very costly. And so for me, uh, you know, Part of what I need is is the pharmacy coverage because I have to have the insulin yeah. and I have to have an yeah, insulin pump, and it it just it's it's crazy how expensive that stuff is. Yeah. So uh, you know, um, what do you do for you help other people with stress relief? Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the conversations we're having, you know, I, I do some Joe Dispenza work on the side. It sounds sounds very similar to what uh, you know uh, up that line of. Uh, line of thinking. Is that kind mm -hmm. of what you do with folks for, for stress relief and for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So what I do is, you know, if somebody's uh, uh, struggling with it and, you know, I'll, I'll give them some suggestions because the, the book I wrote after I got out of the hospital, uh, what it, what I did was I thought, you know what, I need to take care of myself first because I've been putting all of my responsibilities ahead of my health. Mm. And when you're trading your health for your career, that's mm. a really bad trade. Mm. So uh, I went ahead and I, I uncovered a couple hundred different activities and I tried them all myself. And then I figured some, you know, a lot of them worked, some of them didn't. Yeah. But what I found was that probably 90, 95% of them, yeah. you can implement in five minutes or less, which really? is great because something that might work for me, Patrick, may not yeah. work for you and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. So it's it's more about finding something or two that work for you and you run with those because what is true is if mm -hmm. you have one or two techniques that you yeah. can use to reduce your stress and you right. utilize them on a daily basis, yeah. the compound benefits over time will be enormous, but you got to be consistent with it and consistent with it you yeah. gotta just use it make it a habit basically very cool i love it now you actually have a, a course in, in a book that you wrote mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. on these, these topics right correct so lighten your day is uh it was an amazon bestseller um and uh, then the also this the uh class on udemy uh, by the same name is is up there too. So you know, different people, they uh, you know, some people like to read about it and try something. Yeah, Others right. like to see videos and, and try it. So depending on uh, your le learning style, um, there's even an audio book of the uh, of Lighten Your Day. So um, depending on what what works best for each individual person, there's different ways to uh, to to learn a few great stress relief tips and uh, activities that can be truly game changers really are game changers. 
Yeah, totally. You know, it's funny, we originally when we did the pre call, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, deciding whether or not to sell your business, uh, you know, not controlling, you know, the, these other regular business tips. And this uh -huh. this episode has been all about uh, something totally different, which I think is fantastic, because I can tell that you're super passionate about this, Pete, I can mm -hmm. tell you're super passionate about it. It is. And uh, on that particular topic too, Patrick, one of the biggest game changer activities that you yeah. can do as a, for stress relief sure. is making sure you're absolutely clear on your personal values. Because as wow. long as you know what your personal values are, let's say as it relates to your career, yeah. then if it comes up to the point where you want, you're thinking about selling your business, or let's say you're thinking about buying a business, or you're thinking about uh, expanding the business or hiring yeah. a key employee, yeah. whatever, whatever the big decision might be, yeah. if you know exactly what your personal values are, mm. and then you make sure that that decision is in alignment with those top five values, then you are not going to add additional stress to your life. Interesting. But I, I can't tell you how many people go against their personal values in a decision, and then they wonder why they're so stressed out. Wow. It, it's it, 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 it's mind-boggling. It really is. You know, it's interesting. We, we always have company values or corporate values, mm -hmm. but um, nobody really has developed or not nobody, but you know, most people that I interact with don't haven't really developed those personal values. And, and, and you're saying to do that and actually use it as a decision making tool and for your personal life. Absolutely. Well, per, personal life, your professional life, because um, right. yeah, because you, you know, there's, there's, uh, depending on uh, the area of your life that you're concerned with, mm -hmm. you you know, there will be some personal values that will, you know, cross pollinate and will be the same, but there'll be a couple that'll be different. And so it's yeah, always yeah. best to say, okay, this is, has to do, let's say with my career or my business, what are my top five values? And is this decision in alignment with those five? And, mm. at me, and you have to have all five. Because if mm. let's say it fits for one through three, but not four, but maybe five, well, guess what? That number four is going to creep up and there's going to, it's going to cause you some problem. It will. You're, com you're compromising yourself. There's going to be a red flag there somewhere. <clears throat> you bet. You bet. And it's, it really is. And, you know, one of the things that I have in the book and the class is um, it's a, it's basically a 10 minute activity that you can, you can professionally elicit your personal values. Wow. That's awesome. Um, and, and so just for the listeners, uh, it's called Udemy, right? I think Udemy. I yes. Udemy. U okay. Yes. Uh, Udemy.com. And it's lighten your day. And lighten then the same day. thing, okay, cool. same thing with a book. Um, what I can do is uh, I can provide the links to both uh, cool. so that yeah. you can, you can provide it in the show notes. Put it on the podcast. Yeah. And they're, they're pretty cheap too. I, I just found mm -hmm. out about U Udemy uh, not mm -hmm. too long ago, but it's, you know, it's not like a, you know, a lot of courses you see are like five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. These are very, very inexpensive courses, and you get some really good information out of these things. You do, you do, and you know, and the nice thing is, is that you buy the course and you just you do it at your pace. You know, same nice. thing like you would do with a book yeah. is you pick it up and you read it. And the like the the way that I uh, wrote the book was, uh -huh. you know, you pick it up. You're not going to just sit there and read a novel. You just pick it up whenever you're stressed. You try out a technique and see yeah, if yeah. it works for you. And when you find one that works for you, you run with it. I love it. I love that advice too, because there's so much being in that personal improvement space. There's so many gurus or so many different ways uh -huh. and you think you have to try them all. And you're exactly right. You don't, you try the one, find one that works and stick with it. It is. And you know, it's so interesting because when I was looking for my own stress relief uh, uh, books, the interesting thing is, is I saw all these books that were 300 pages on one technique, like meditation or deep breathing. And I'm thinking to myself, who has time right. for yeah. 300 Nobody. pages on one subject? It's like, yeah. you know, the reality is most of us have five minutes or less before mm -hmm. we got to go to our next mm -hmm. meeting. And so it's got to fit in that time frame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, man. Um, very good. So, so um, let me ask, I asked this question on, on, um, well, I'll get to that one in a second. Actually, you had a story about hiring the wrong person. 
Mm -hmm. uh in in your business it, well yeah. you know what before we even get to i haven't even had you talk about have office plans.com yet <laughs> we're just having so much fun talking about stress i've just skipped over all that T tell us more about your company man sure so uh office plants by everything grows is a interior landscaping company and what we do is we uh help companies you know reduce stress and improve their productivity through the methodical design and placement of lush living plants and work environments so what happens is when there are live plants in an office environment mm. what happens is, is that not only is it a more appealing from a visual standpoint for employees sure. but there's a calming effect because when we bring nature indoors it's amazing how therapeutic that can be to the psyche. Just like mm. if we were to go outside and walk and uh, walk around the trees or plants right, or something right. like that, we can do that indoors as well. And so that's what Office Plants does. And uh, it's great because I've had the business uh, uh, for since 2005 mm -hmm. and grew it from a very struggling business into uh, a, a thriving business that was able to survive COVID because that was a torpedo for us. Talk about stress. Um, we, uh, we lost 60% of our business in 30 days back in Mar March of 2020. And uh, it was, it, you know, at, there was times where we thought, gosh, are we gonna be able to survive this? But we were able to, and uh, I give all the credit to our employees and our staff. And, uh, you know, we're back, you know, we're uh, stronger than ever. Um, and I'm very grateful for it because it's, it's, it's a good business uh, that uh, provides a much needed service at a very reasonable price to 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 businesses. Yeah. Wow, I love it. So so are you you're you're mainly targeting so you're a B2B company then it's not Correct. B2C you're mainly, no. mainly targeting. Is there no. a certain kind of company or size of company that you guys mainly cater to? So what we typically do is it's going to be companies that have you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 or more employees. Okay. So that's typically yeah. going to be it. But we have, we do have some customers that have only 10 employees. And, you know, the uh, uh, right now with uh, the return to the office, uh, you know, some companies, you know, have scaled down their offices yeah. and that's works as well because, you know, some people are sharing offices, et cetera. And so what we've done is we've gone ahead and uh, arranged uh, and modify different layouts because that's part of what we do. We do the design. So it's like, okay, what is the floor space like? What are you doing in each of these rooms? And what is what makes the most sense for having a plant or not having a plant in a particular uh, location? So um, it's every, it, there's not a cookie cutter uh, client. So each client, uh, we do a customized design for them based wow. on what their floor space is, their lighting, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So you're coming in, this is a full consultation. This is, mm -hmm. you're helping them place the right plants to have the, the right effect for whatever they're looking for. That's absolutely correct. So that's why, why we keep, uh, you know, our, our uh, customer uh, retainment is, is off the charts. It really is wow. because, you know, our, our uh, bi uh, business is based on the fact that we keep those plants looking great in offices and people say, oh, it must be really easy to just throw some water on it. Well, there's a lot more than just throwing water on a plant and anyone who's tried to take care of an in uh, plant indoors knows this yeah. because yeah, plants, plants, that's, you know, artificial light, they're not, that they they're not designed for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so you guys are helping, uh, design, consult, place the plants, uh, actually in the, in the facility, but then you're also maintaining. That's absolutely correct. And part of our, wow. our, our okay. contract is that if a plant starts to fail for whatever reason, you guys think we're gonna we're gonna take care of it. We'll replace that plant. And typically what we'll do is we'll bring that that plant that we replaced back into our facility to see what's going on with it. And um, if we can, uh, you know, have it recover, great. We'll yeah, we'll yeah. bring it back to to health. If for whatever reason, and this has happened, uh, we'll have plants that die because somebody thinks, oh, you know, this uh, plant will enjoy this coca-cola splashed yeah, in it sure. or something yeah, and it yeah. doesn't like that and it starts to yeah. crap out and so if if we, for whatever reason we figure we can't um save the plant then we just recycle it so gotcha what a niche offering 
It is, it is. And it, what's great about it is, is that, um, you know, it's the typically where our uh, monthly fee is not so high that people think, oh gosh, that's the first line item that we're going to cut. Um, it's right. not, it's, it's, it, it, it's, we price it so that it's very cost effective and it's going to be something that if they decide that they take, want to get rid of the plants because they're, let's say the business is going, you know, is, is just really struggling. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want the plants to be the first thing on their mind to say, okay, this is our first budget cut yeah, yeah. Uh, that we're going to do. Um, right. So, because uh, it, it's, you know, when we've had to do that with companies, especially mm -hmm. like when, uh, when um, uh, with COVID, but COVID. even before that, you know, you'll have an occasional company that, that is struggling and you'll see the, the, the uh, way that employees just really get bummed out if the plants get removed. So, uh, it's, cause, so it's a real negative uh, for the employees. And so, you know, we want to make sure that the companies don't want, don't, don't resort to that unless they absolutely have to. Yeah. So the plants, I mean, provide for the employees, a more positive environment, uh -huh. stress reduced environment. Um, I mean, it's putting out oxygen, right? I mean, I'm sure that helps as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and, it, and it's, you don't have to have a, a jungle full of plants to do that. Really just, just a few plants strategically placed and the right kind of plants can really make a difference. Yeah. Interesting. It, and, you know, on this topic of stress relief, um, you, you had w one of the things you were talking about was uh, don't try to control the, the uncontrollable. Tell us more uh -huh. about that. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about COVID. Um, one of the things that we tend to do as humans is whenever we are faced with a stressful situation, we stress about all aspects of it. Yeah. And the reality is, there's certain parts of that situation that we have some control over, and there's definitely some of them that we don't have control over. So if we think about like COVID, when COVID was first hitting us, um, you know, people were going, oh my gosh, uh, you know, I can't believe the government response, or I can't believe the school has closed, or I can't believe that uh, I, I have to work from home, or I have to wear a mask or anything like this. Well, the reality is a lot of those things we didn't have any control over. And when we stress about those, mm -hmm. well, that's not serving us. Mm -hmm. What we should be doing is focusing on what we have control over. So anytime that you have a very stressful situation that you're faced with, the best thing to do, if you can have the mindset to do this, is to create two lists. One list of the things about that situation that you can control, make a second list of the things you cannot control. Mm. And then in your mind, focus as much attention as you can on what you can control. Mm. Because the things that you can control mean that those are the things you can affect change in. And when we feel like we are, have control, when we feel like we can make a change, our stress goes way, way down. So why waste it on the things that we can't we can't affect, we can't make a difference in. And that's so, so if we can do that mental uh, uh, mindset change where we can focus on what we can't control and try and ignore as much as possible what we can't control, we'll be mm. much happier and much less stressed. Wow, that's, that's a great, and I love the methodology that you're putting behind that too. You're making a decision about something, you draw the line, what you can control and what you can't control and focus on what you can control and having that sure. delineation. That is not a normal decision-making process or, you know, handling any kind of a situation that I've heard before. That's the first mm -hmm. time I've heard something like that. Yeah. And see our mindset, we only have a, a limited amount of mindset. So why waste a whole bunch of it totally. on yeah. what, what we can't do anything about? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to change anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Very cool. So um, a question I ask everybody on the show, if you're going to hire a CEO to take the reins for your company, what's the one book that you would require he or she read before taking over for you? I would uh, uh, recommend The Slight Edge uh, by, book. yes. And for those, you know, reading that one, the key concept behind that book is just do, do uh, something slightly better than your competition. 1% better 
That's mm-hmm. all you need to focus on. So you don't have to be, you know, uh, miles ahead of the competition. You don't have to be spending tons more money. Just do something just a bit better. And what will happen is if you do that and you, f- you make sure your employees are doing that, you are going to be successful. And that, I mean, it, it's a very simple concept in that book, but the author gives so many different recommendations about and examples of that in action. And it's, it's really a good read. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that recommendation. I, I, Slight Edge has been one of the books that transformed how I have been able to be successful because it, it also, another one of the things is, is it really talks about is just doing the little things every day, mm-hmm. just doing the little Absolutely. things and, the, and they add up. Um, Pete, awesome to have you on the show. Um, I'm going to take a minute and just kind of summarize some of my key takeaways. Uh, one is laugh. Laugh a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Laugh as much as you can. And, you know, the biggest thing there, as you said, was 20 minutes of laughing is like 60 minutes of a hardcore workout. That blows me away. That mm-hmm. blows me away. I love it. Um, it. Stress relief is extremely important. And uh, Pete, you offer a course on Udemy. And we're going to, I'm going to have you bring that up here in a second again. Uh, another thing that was important with personal values and decision making. Um, mm-hmm. When, when you make any kind of a decision and specifically we were, we were going to get to the topic of, you know, deciding whether or not to sell your business, but we're, I was so enthralled with your stress relief, <laughs> but, but personal values in, in any decision-making. And that also helps reduce the stress because you're, you're staying true to yourself and not, not trying to look for exterior means, which, which could be stressful in making a decision. Absolutely. Um, I had no idea that plants in a workplace were really that calming. And, and even, I mean, to that extent, plants in the home, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, sh- I'm sure have the same, but, but it, but it leads to employee happiness and productivity. Don't try to, uh, you know, control the uncontrollable. I love that methodology that you talked about there, drawing that line, delineating between the two and focusing on only what you can control because it's, it's not something that we normally, right. Differentiate in, in mm-hmm. any kind of decision. So, so I love that. Pete, if, if any of our, um, uh, if there was one takeaway that you'd really want the audience to absorb from our time together today, what would that be? I would say um, don't trade your health for your career. Mm. That's a very bad trade. Mm. It is a bad trade. And what ends up happening is people that do kind of start going down that road, they trade their health for their career. And then it ends up just turning right back around. When you start losing your health, you can't give to your family. You can't give to the business. You yep. can't give to yourself, most importantly. Absolutely. And it, it, you said it exactly right, Patrick, because people say, well, you know, I, I, I don't have the time. I, I've got to take care of my kids. I got to take care of my business, et cetera. And then I, I always say, well, okay, think about the last time that you were really, you felt really sick, like with the flu, let's say. Did you feel like doing anything other than lying in bed? Most people say no. And I said, Okay, so imagine yourself lying in bed, feeling like crap. What good are you going to do for your business, for your loved ones, et cetera? You don't have any energy. You your it. health is too critical. You know, the, to me, the two most important things we have is time and our health. Mm. You know, time goes away right away. Our health, right. if, we let it, if, if we lose that, you know, there's no guarantee you can bring it back. No, not at all. And, and, and I think it's also proven that the sooner you get on it, the, the sooner you can biohack, keep your age, you know, you can actually, you can actually yeah. reverse your age, but some things are not reversible. Yes, it's absolutely right. And uh, people are surprised uh, when they see pictures of me when I was first diagnosed with stress induced diabetes back in 2008. Mm-hmm. And this is 2023 now. So 15 years. And you look at a picture of me now, or you see me now, and you look at a picture of me from 15 years ago, other than a little bit more gray hair, uh-huh. I actually look younger today than I did love 15 it, it. years ago. It's, it's, that's nuts. That's what stress does to us. Thank you. This is horrible. Yeah. You look great, man. You look great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank well, you. Pete, so uh, we're going to have your LinkedIn profile on there for anybody mm-hmm. who maybe wants to follow up for questions. Um, how do they get a hold of you for your book again? If you could flash that up, what's the name of the book? Sure. And then also the Udemy course, just in case anybody wants to reach out on that. 
Yep. Lighten your day. And then same thing on the Udemy course. Um, I'll cool. give you the links awesome. to those, you know, both from the Amazon and the Udemy course. Uh, and and uh, LinkedIn is a great way to, to reach out. And I, you know, I invite anybody listening to, to connect with me. I'd be happy to, 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 to meet you guys. Awesome. Fantastic. Pete, uh, thanks again for being on the show. This was absolutely fantastic. I had a blast. And I did too, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me on the show. And I really appreciate your listeners' time. Absolutely. And for the listeners out there, please hit the like and subscribe button. Help us spread the word about what we're doing. We're helping the next generation of leaders and CEOs be that much more successful. With that, this is your host, Patrick Rogers, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks a lot.